beautiful and wonderful plant friend. Today I'm going to be filming a video discussing the bacteria that killed all of my plants a couple of months ago. And you might be wondering, well actually, why is this two leaf ring of fire next to you? Well, I'll tell you. Somehow she is just dying. I'm going to do something good out of it. I'm going to show you the bacteria on this plant because it is the same bacteria that murdered all of my other plants. I'm going to tell you the warning signs on how to spot this bacteria and how to avoid spreading this bacteria if you do get it. Before we keep going, please, please leave a like and subscribe. Okay, hello. So here is kind of what we are working with. First of all, I am going to be putting on these gloves and I will explain why later. So, what is this sickness? There are two different possibilities of the sickness and there's just not that much known about plant diseases because I mean, the plants, when they die, they die and no one thinks twice about them, right? You know, oh, plants, like, they're just supposed to do that or they're supposed to get bugs, or they're supposed to like, no, I mean, yes, if they're outside, but there's no reason that our plants should not be safe and healthy inside, right? I'm going to talk about bacteria versus fungal infections because they are different. One is much worse than the other. And I'm going to then show you an example of a bacterial infection. So with that being said, let the explanation begin. So basically, what I'm going to start with is called fungal leaf spots, so or leaf blight, basically. Um, essentially what this is, and I'm going to read this from this website, this is the UNDEDU, and I will provide a link to this in the description. This will be the first link after my social media links in the description. And this is from University of Maryland, Exten Maryland? Huh. University of Maryland Extension University. All right, so general leaf spots. Fungal leaf spots are common on many herbaceous flowering plants. However, some are more devastating than others. Experience and regular monitoring will alert gardeners as to how serious the problem. Foliar diseases, which is the top of the leaf, will frequently be weather dependent and vary in seriousness from season to season. In some cases, leaf spots will not spread or cause much damage. So the first thing I'm gonna really talk about because there are different kinds of fungal leaf spots. You have downy mildews, powdery mildews, and then rusts and anthracnose and a bunch of other ones that are unnamed, right? So basically for downy mildews, this is what it says. Early symptoms are usually noticed as a light green or yellow angular patch on the upper leaf surface. So I can tell you from experience, the biggest way to tell between bacterial and fungal is bacterial infections usually occur on the underside of the leaf where you don't see it until you've touched it. The oils in your skin and the heat of your skin activates it almost like a switch, basically like kickstarts the bacterial infection and then it like just destroys your plants. And then because it's on your hands and you don't see anything yet, if you touch all your other plants, because you love your plants, why wouldn't you touch them? You should be able to touch them. Then uh, you're basically spreading a deadly infection. The difference though with downy mildew is that you will get almost like a mold on it. Moving on to powdery mildews. Powdery mildews grow as a white powdery coating over the surface of the leaves. You would notice this if you had it, right? That these are mostly outside things. And so now I want to jump over to bacterial leaf spots. Now, when it comes to bacterial, this is where my expertise really shines because this has happened to me a few different times. The biggest time I killed two Rufidophoras, and when I say kill, I mean I had to cut all their leaves off. I still have them. I killed two Rufidophoras, four leaves on this Cupria, a couple of my, oh boy, three of my Wenlandii leaves for my Syngonium, a bunch of my Pothos leaves, a bunch of my Cebu leaves. 
So you're asking, Ashley, what is a bacterial leaf spot? I will tell you and then I'll show you. Bacteria are single-celled microscopic organisms bounded by a cell wall that cause plant diseases. Bacteria are much smaller than fungi and nematodes, but can cause severe symptoms. Bacteria pathogens can cause soft rots, vascular wilts, leaf spots, and blights, as well as secondary infections. Commonly encountered genre include Erwinia, Xanthom Xanthomonas, Pseudomonas, corn bacteria, and agrobacteria. Bacterial leaf spots and blights can occur at the same time as fungal leaf spots and diagnoses can sometimes be difficult. Bacterial leaf spots will sometimes have a more angular appearance and the spots are usually between the veins. If a new leaf or shoot quickly collapses or a spot develops with a shiny, dark appearance, or basically the leaf is thinned out and instead of it being a crunchy dark, it's, it's kind of like a soft dark, then it is called a blight. First of all, before you handle any kind of damaged plants, you always want to use latex gloves. Your beautiful, cute, aesthetic garden gloves will not cut it because the bacteria can basically hop onto that. And if your gloves are wet, you're incubating the bacteria. It's a big mess. Just buy yourself some nice latex gloves or finger condoms. I don't know what those are called. Let's look up what are finger condoms. Cots, they're called finger cots. Yeah, I have a friend who uses finger cots instead of latex gloves. All right, so here is the scary part and the sad part for me. I'm going to show you this beautiful rare plant I have that is very much infected with this disease and it just honestly makes me want to cry. So I'm gonna move the camera, the orientation is going to change and you will get to see the bane of my existence. <laughs> so I'm going to use flash to give you an accurate representation of what's happening here. Um, so you can see the water soaked area that it is talking about is this bigger, this bigger piece. And you can see that it, it almost thins out the leaf. Like there is a very clear injury to the, to the foliar, to the foliar cells that are making it just completely wither into nothing. And this will often spread in dots or start out in this exact way that you're seeing it right now with these very small dots. Sometimes over here, you might even see something where it's almost completely thinned through the leaf like it has in this spot right above my thumb here. And down here, you will notice more symptoms along the leaf vein where the bacteria has traveled all the way down. On the back of the leaf, you will also notice the same circles. They are the worst thing in the whole world. But this is what you should look for. And it will usually be on the back of the leaf that you will see it. And please remember, a key factor is that your leaf does not crunch when you move it. It looks like a regular leaf, except for like sick. But you can see that it's not crunchy. It just looks wet. You can also see that the bacteria has since spread to the petiole. This next part is very important. As soon as you are done handling plant material, remove your gloves inside out and throw them immediately into the garbage. Do not put them on your counter. You will have to sanitize your counter and wash your hands very thoroughly. Now friends, I'm going to show you what happens when you don't have a bacterial leaf spot, but actually you just have leaf damage. Leaf damage will appear crunchy, hard, and scabbed over like this guy. Okay, so now is the part of the video where I tell you about how you can prevent and manage these things. If you have a fungal infection, that's better 
With fungal infections, you can remove the damaged leaves and the plant leaves that are not so damaged. You can actually get a fungicide or try using natural ways such as cinnamon or baking soda to dawn to water, like one, one to one to one. Not with cinnamon in that, cinnamon is different. And you have a chance at saving the leaf because if you can kill the fungus, the bacteria will go away assuming you don't have a secondary infection. With something like this, the plant, the plant is doomed. I say that, normally I would keep the leaf, right? You keep the leaves or just cut them off and you wait for a new plant to come out of it, right? Unfortunately, on this plant, the infection has spread down to the petiole. I do not know how this infection got so bad underneath my watch, except that something must have happened between its shipping process to me and then my moving process, and it just not handling it. With bacterial infections, you have to remove all infected Places. So if it's just on your leaves, that's good. You can cut it off and move on with your life. The bacteria is gone, and as long as you don't bring it back to the plant, you're okay. Like with my cute little alocasia cuprae right here. With this plant, where it is so far gone, the, the petioles are literally rotting, there's nothing you can do. When I say that there's nothing you can do, I'm talking from a houseplant hobbyist and collector's perspective, not from one of you scientific plant people that knows how to do tissue culture sampling and things like that to save plants that are dying. I have no knowledge on that. I wish that I did. If you find that you have a spot, let's say that on my Alocasia cupria, I had a spot that I wanted to remove make sure that you sanitize your scissors first with hydrogen peroxide and alcohol and then you can go about cutting your plant. I do not suggest cutting a section because if the actual foliar area of your plant has been damaged, you're opening up the sides of the plant and the infection will then creep onto the outside of the plant from the inside because you have opened a wound. This happened to me on my monstera elbow that I have in Oregon, the one from the potted elephant plant hall. It had a couple of bruises on it. And I, at this point I did not know, and this was recently, how to tell the difference between a bruise and an infection. Infections will spread, bruises will not. And I will also show you an example of a bruise right now. So bruising basically occurs when you injure the plant's outer foliar area. This is an example of a bruise. You can tell that it is not an injury because number one, you can see that there is no yellow outline around the areas that are affected and these areas have not been spreading. If you were to touch them and there was some gross dirt on your hands, you could risk giving the plant an infection but it would be a pretty, pretty hard thing to do. I would just avoid touching your white elbow leaves altogether just because, I mean, it's just not worth it. Here you can see we do actually have a pretty bad bruise that I am worried is infected, but we won't know until it unfurls and I can really see exactly what we're working with. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please leave a like, please subscribe if you haven't yet, and tweet me at David Dubrick. And let me know if you have this plant infection. If you need help handling your infection because you're not sure, please DM me at instagram.com forward slash Ashley Slater, or just click on the link in the description on your phone and it will open it up in Instagram and you are free to message me and ask me for advice. I'm always here to help. And with that being said, I will see you in the next video. Peace.